You are listening to Library Out Loud, recorded at Albert Wisner Public Library in Warwick, New York, on December 15, 2015, by Susan Supak. We're talking today with scientists Dr. Charles Holmes and Dr. William Makovsky about the life and discoveries of the famous Albert Einstein. Dr. Holmes is a retired program manager from NASA headquarters in Washington, D.C., where he oversaw the operations of more than 20 scientific satellite projects, including the Voyagers and the Mars Global Surveyor, as well as numerous investigations of the Sun and its impact on the Earth in interplanetary space. He recently completed a four-year term as the vice chair of NASA's IT Infrastructure Advisory Committee, which provided feedback to NASA on its vast collection of computers, software, and data networks. He is also a retired officer from the United States Air Force, where he was involved in numerous research and development projects. Dr. Holmes has a BS in physics from the U.S. Air Force Academy and a Ph.D. in nuclear science and engineering from Cornell University. Dr. Makovsky received his Ph.D. in physics from Rutgers University and has been a faculty member at Rutgers, the University of Minnesota, and Columbia University. His main area of interest is on physics and the environment, with a focus on the environmental impacts of energy production, computer modeling of environmental systems, alternative energy sources, and global climate change. He's been a visiting scientist at the Building Research Establishment in England, the Argonne National Laboratory in Illinois, and a Fulbright Fellow in Alternative Energy and Environmental Protection in Germany. He is a physics professor emeritus at Ramapo College, where he initiated the Alternative Energy Center. Dr. Mikofsky is also a member of Sustainable Warwick, where he is the energy advisor for the Energize Warwick campaign. Wow, that's an impressive background for both of you. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome. Thank you. Yes, we're glad to be here. Thank you. Well, it could be said that Albert Einstein is one of the most easily recognized and famous people in the world. Chuck, why would you say that Einstein has become such an icon and the embodiment of genius? What did Einstein do to make him such an enduring cultural icon? Uh, it might be the way he appears. He appears like the fanatic scientist, uh, wild hair, bushy hair, and... Uh, mustache, etc. Uh, so it probably starts with that. Uh, then perhaps the legend, the legend of uh, the accomplishments that he made early in his life. Uh, uh, that probably followed up by his role in getting the uh, United States to start the uh, their path towards uh, making the, uh, the first uh, atomic weapon with, uh, with his uh, letter to Roosevelt in 1939. So a combination of those three, icon, uh, just the way he looks. He um, definitely has a unique look about him. Nobody can, yes. can mistake that. Did you have anything to add, Bill? Well, I think uh, he's the father of modern physics, and uh, I think if you look at his uh, all of his work, uh, you see all of the present-day technology, and so I think part of it is just that connection as well. Mm -hmm. He is the father of most of our modern technology as well as our modern physics. Quite a contribution to the world. Um, he's also known as a philosopher and a humanist, and uh, he has a keen interest in humanity. You want to comment a little on that, Bill? Well, he has spent a lot of time being concerned about other people. Uh, for example, when uh, he had left Germany during, right before World War II, and he was in fact prevented from going back to Germany, he tried uh, by contacting many, many uh, heads of state to try to get the uh, German Jewish scientists out of Germany. And uh, I read one thing where just in one country alone, he may have allowed over a thousand German Jewish scientists to emigrate. Oh, I never heard that before. Yeah. And so that's one thing that he certainly did. He, he's certainly a pacifist and uh, I, th I think the one thing in his life that he did that was probably something he may have regretted was his letter to Roosevelt which led to the atomic weapons. But 
On the other hand, uh, he, with Bertrand Russell, for example, issued the Russian Einstein uh, uh, Manifesto about the dangers of nuclear weapons, and he, he always focused on world government, the United Nations, and trying to prevent war. I believe, uh, I remember hearing at one point he had called that letter to Roosevelt the one mistake in his life. So it was definitely significant to him, the, the atomic bomb and, and the use of it on the Japanese. Yes. Well, but they were very concerned about the German side going down the path to uh, developing it. So they were not only Einstein, but also all the other emigres that had come from Europe. Uh, and many, uh, after the war, took up the same uh, uh, cause of, uh, of uh, protesting and, and trying to um, uh, re de demilitarize uh, atomic energy. Mm -hmm. So Einstein wasn't alone in, in that regard. So he was just really concerned about the Nazis' use of the atomic yes. weapon and what they would do if they had it. Yes, so. uh, all, all the emigres, uh, particularly the ones that came through Germany, uh, were very concerned because they're, they're colleagues that were left behind that uh, they knew had, uh, or at least they uh, supposed had, uh, the same technical information about how to go down the path for, uh, for atomic weapons. I suppose his interest in humanity and the world is reflected in the fact that he had three citizenships, did he not? He was German, he was Swiss, he was U.S., wasn't he? Israeli, too, I believe. Oh, that. was he? All right. Because he, uh, he was one of the early Zionists back in the 1920s, uh, trying to f work the international system to develop the homeland for, for the, uh, the Jews in Palestine. Uh, and is reported that after um, Hein Weissman died, the first president of, of Israel, uh, that Einstein was offered the position of the presidency of Israel, which is more of a, uh, a ceremonial position, but still an important position. He, he uh, at that time, declined. He was in his, obviously, late 50s, or late, you know, he was, it was in the early 50s when it, when it happened. People loved him, as I understand. Oh, yeah. People swarmed around him when he came somewhere. They and he loved to talk about his theories. Well, yeah. I should point out that his first uh, switch of citizenship was actually when he was—he didn't want to be drafted, and that's why he made the first uh, switch to the Swiss citizenship. So, uh, uh, obviously, after he came to the United States for quite a while, he decided to stay here and become a citizen. We touched on Einstein's influence on uh, life today. Uh, you know, can you talk a little bit about that, how his theories have affected the way we live today? Um, early in my research career, uh, once I left Cornell, I was at an Air Force research lab. I was working on uh, high-energy lasers, and in particular, uh, how one pumps energy into, uh, into gases and then uh, gets laser energy out. Uh, so I was working on some computer, computer models, and a very key part of those computer, computer models uh, was something called the Einstein coefficients, which told how a gas or, or a solid would absorb light energy, how it would emit light energy, and particularly a third component, how light would stimulate emission of, of uh, more light out of uh, 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 atoms and molecules that, had, uh, that were excited. Uh, and so, in, in a way, Einstein is the father of the laser. And you, if you look through the, through the literature, you never see that talked about. I don't think I've ever read that but, anywhere. But as he read, wrote a paper in, 1915, in 1917 outlining uh, this, uh, this phenomena and, and giving uh, equations for these... Uh, uh, coefficients of absorption, emission, and stimulated emission, which I was using. Uh, so uh, he is, uh, his, his career is full of these little sidelights besides relativity mm -hmm. and things like that, that that he contributed to. Yeah, I think uh, in addition to, to relativity, I mean, I, I was amazed. I didn't know that he had done so much work in, in solid state physics. And so uh, 
and statistical physics. I knew about the Bose-Einstein uh, right. statistics, but even beyond that, he had done a lot. And so if you look at almost every area of modern physics, you find that he has made some contribution, sometimes the, a foundational contribution to it. Would be a re big reason why I suppose Time magazine named him the person of the century. 1999. I mean, he, he did have an incredible effect. Uh, one of the just sidelines I have to say, since this is the week for the release of the new Star Wars film, <laughs> is that I understand that Yoda was influenced by Einstein because uh, the the maker had his eyes look like Einstein. Have you ever heard that before? Uh, no, I haven't. I, I had heard, neither. I had heard things like that, <laughs> that the Yoda was modeled uh, loosely after, after Einstein's uh, countenance. Yeah. <laughs> so on, on, a, on a slightly different track, when you were both uh, a part of a program here at the library, which was very interesting, commemorating the 100th anniversary of Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity, or is it the theory of general relativity, which is it? Theory of general relativity. Thank you very much. Um, we watched a film, a PBS film called Einstein's Big Idea, which was excellent and very informative. And Chuck, you mentioned that it was important for people to notice the role of women in science. You want to just speak a little bit about that? Well, the, the, uh, the production is a Nova production, PBS Nova production. And it was very well done and had many historical sketches of contributions of scientists leading up to uh, Einstein's development of the equation equals mc squared. Uh, many of those contributions involved women in the 17th and 18th uh, centuries and 19th century. Uh, by and large, these contributions were kind of behind the scene or they were supporting the male lead, so to speak, kind of a traditional role of women, not only in science, but in the arts and literature, as, as history will, will tell us. Um, yet, their contributions were extremely significant, uh, uh, and only now I think they're getting the recognition, just like my, art, my wife's an art historian, and she has the same story about women artists of the Renaissance and the, uh, the uh, 17th, 18th and 19th century the same way. I guess like uh, Claire and Mr. Tiffany and that sort uh, of thing. Uh, yes, and, and I won't name some of the artists because I right. can't. But, <laughs> but uh, so I thought that the uh, that, that uh, production by Nova uh, did a very good job of, of of demonstrating the important role that women made and the fact that they weren't getting the recognition until lately as people went back and investigated mm -hmm. uh, the records of, of the contributions of these people. It was an interesting film, and, and Albert Einstein definitely has quite an interesting life. I was intrigued by uh, the way that he developed in his childhood in terms of speech and language. I guess he didn't speak until he was four years old. Um, some re researchers think perhaps he had a form of autism, who knows. They say he didn't learn to read until he was nine. Um, I, I did see a quote from him that said, I very rarely think in words at all. A thought comes, and I may try to express it in words afterwards, which is interesting uh, in terms of the way he was able to have these conceptual ideas of things that may be difficult to put into words, particularly if they've never been conceived of before. Um, Einstein's brain even comes up in terms of after his death when the, uh, the person who did the autopsy unfortunately took it without the permission of his family. Have you uh, anything to add on Einstein in terms of, of his development or the way that he became involved and interested in science? Well, he says personally that one of the, his major influences was when he was five years old and he got a magnetic compass to play with. And uh, a magnetic compass, for anyone who has played with it, you realize that it, uh, you know, you can put it near and far from different objects and it has different motions and it, it's very difficult to explain everything that happens to it. And uh, he used that, or he had that effect uh, the way he thought about uh, nature and about it, it motivated him to want to understand mm. how these things operated and, and why they operated. 
And uh, in his own words, that was his, uh, a major uh, early influence. Um, I, think, I think he did a lot of thinking in his own mind, and he formulated questions or paradoxes for him about why things worked, and then let it sit there for many, many years. And uh, you could say, I, I think that he used his unconscious to a larger extent than many people do, and most people perhaps. Mm -hmm. And this is, he, he let it sit there and have his unconscious work on it, and then work on it consciously again and go back and forth. And I think that's perhaps uh, one of the ways that he was able to come up with all of this material that he did. Very interesting. Do you think that if Einstein hadn't come up with these ideas, someone else might have? I mean, did he was he developing on top of ideas that had already were there that someone else could have would have come up at, at in a short period of time and developed that, or was he in a totally different realm? Um, no, he was uh, he was at the right place at the right time, and he uh, just like all people that make uh, significant accomplishments, they have to, they do these accomplishments on top of the work of those before them. Um, in the case of his most noted accomplishment, which the, the two relativity theories, that other people were working on similar approaches, uh, or, or at least getting similar results. Uh, Lorentz's uh, paper actually predated uh, Einstein's 1905 special relativity paper, came with the same result by a totally different uh, method. Uh, and his, his 1915 papers on general relativity, uh, the German mathematician David Hilbert was about to publish the same results after they two had collaborated uh, the previous year uh, on the problem. Um, what, what Einstein's uniqueness, uh, what he brought, which is different, was his ability to perform what were called thought experiments. Uh, science leading up to the 20th century was done in the lab. Uh, it was done uh, with, with equipment and with careful measurements and collecting lots of data. And then once you've collected it, uh, what does that mean? What, what equation can I come up to explain the data that has been measured? Um, and there was theory on top of that, but it was mainly collecting these equations and trying to uh, make some uh, common sense. Einstein's approach was, let's get down to the fundamental of nature. What is nature trying to tell us? And he did this through these very simple thought experiments. Uh, I've like I've heard this uh, likened to daydreaming. He was a daydreamer, that and, and he would just sit there and just for hours work these things out. Um, um, so. Had he not come up with these, uh, yes, uh, other people would have, uh, maybe using a different path, a different approach, but uh, uh, the progress of science would have moved on, perhaps not as quickly as it, as it had. Is there anything about Einstein, his life, his influences, him as a person, him as a scientist, that you think is a, an important thing for people to know that we haven't already touched on? Well, I, you know, other people may have come up with that, but he came up with a lot in a short time. Yeah. And, and, and what he came up with was, uh, it's like the paradigm uh, shift, because uh, just like Copernicus had the view that uh, <clears throat> the, uh, uh, we were revolving around the sun, uh, his views on how these things came together and were explained were completely different from what existed before. So uh, he had a major break with the business as usual. I mean, most scientists were trying to put together little pieces to, ex to explain uh, nagging difficulties while he was looking at it and looking at this. It's a whole new philosophy, a whole new uh, theory. And in that sense, uh, he was the first to do it. Yeah. Right, right. Definitely a game changer, I'm sure would be safe to say. Uh, I think that would be a good <laughs> word. So now I'm going to read a quote from Einstein, and, and in this I'd just like you to think about 
you know, has, has Einstein had an influence on your lives as scientist or, uh, or perhaps on you personally? He, he is quoted as saying that most people say that it is the intellect which makes a great scientist. They're wrong. It's character. Beautiful quote. I, just a great quote from a great man. And I just, uh, you know, on that thought, wonder if you have something to add about Einstein and his effect on yourselves. Well, I think it takes both intellect and character to be a great scientist. And if he didn't have the intellect, I'm not sure he would come up with any of the great works that he did. So I don't think it's an either or proposition in terms of its, you know, intellect or character. I, I think it's a combination. The character that he may be referring to, if understanding his life, he's always emphasized the importance of striving, of working hard, and and you know, doing something, whether or not you succeed. And he's had a number of quotes specifically in that area. And so I'm wondering if he's thinking the character here is the fact that you don't give up, you keep working at it, even if you don't succeed in understanding something at first, uh, you know, you keep working on it until you hopefully come up with something, but you may not always succeed. And uh, I think that's a good thing for everybody, not Absolutely. just scientists, in terms right. of thinking about their lives and thinking about what, you know, how to approach life. And uh, so in that sense, I think it's a very wonderful quote. Well, he certainly was a character. There's no question about it. <laughs> and, and uh, I mean, he was given a ticker tape parade in, in New York City in the early 1920s because of his uh, uh, general relativity. I mean, nobody understood what it was he did, but they somehow knew it was important. Uh, and, and, uh, uh, and they also kind of knew that uh, his... His, um, his work was done in Germany in 1915, uh, early in, the, in, the, uh, in the World War I. And, and the first real uh, uh, confirmation of his work on general relativity was the, the uh, observations of the solar eclipse done by an English astronomer in 1919. Uh, and, and the news got out that the English astronomer had confirmed the uh, important result from uh, Einstein's theory. And, here is English science had met German science, and they both agreed in that wonderful. And this is after, after the war. So yeah. the political context uh, of these two events was very important on, on, uh, on giving uh, Einstein international attention. And from that, he became an international celebrity. Um, but on the other hand, with all the attention he had, he was a very personal person from what you read of his letters, uh, you read of the biographies uh, of him. Uh, he made uh, dear friends, lasting friends. Uh, some were collaborators, some were just uh, uh, people in his life, and, and they retained that uh, all through his lifetime. And if you read some of the letters, uh, uh, I think they're, uh, they're 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 quite endearing. I think uh, some of the, the chit chat he goes back and forth with with his uh, friends and relatives. I had read, I don't know if it's true or not, but I read that he charged a dollar to sign an autograph and then would contribute it to charity, which I thought was, was admirable. I, I, I think I have heard that too. Seems right. to fit yeah, in right. with his character right. and his understanding of people and his uh, involvement with civil rights and uh, uh, his, his love of humanity right. that shows through a lot of what he did. I want to thank you both very much for being here. It's a very interesting conversation. Uh, this has been a recording of Library Out Loud with Dr. Chuck Holmes and Dr. Bill Makovsky talking about the life and discoveries of the famous Albert Einstein. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you.